Hey guys, hope you're doing well. So this is part three of my little mini series about how I copy new traders. How do I approach them? How do I tell if a trader's good or not when I want to copy one of them? Now I'm using here Guillaume Sedan as my sort of little test case. I haven't copied Guillaume before, but he's a good sort of new profile to look at so I can show you how I analyze these traders. So in the first one, what we looked at was the star rating. What can I tell from the star rating, if anything at all? Uh, and I also looked at this one, the $1,000 recommended minimum copy amount. Now obviously that's much higher than the sort of minimum copy amount that eToro sets. So why is that? I went over that in the first video. In the second one, I looked at this, always copy open trades. Now copying open trades or not is a big decision we have to make when we copy a new trader. And he's saying always copy open trades. So I talked about why that is and why getting it wrong is one of the big frus frustrations many people come across when they copy someone. So watch that one in part two, the always copy open trades, why is that? So in this one, what I wanna look at first is the minimum copy period of one year. That seems like a really long time, yeah? First thing to realize about this minimum copy period, that's not a rule that is set by eToro, okay? So when we come to eToro, if we wanna copy Guillaume or any other trader, we can copy him for five minutes, then stop copying, or 10 minutes, stop copying, one day, one hour, two weeks, however long we want to. There's no set rule about how long we have to copy a trader for, and we don't get charged when we copy them or charged when we, don't, when we stop copying them. Um, this here is actually set by the trader themselves. It's not, it's not a rule, okay? It's a suggestion, it's a guideline. All right, so minimum copy period one year, it seems like a really long time to lock up our money, but I think there are good reasons for that. Now it might, it's, it could be, there could be nefarious reasons that these people are just trying to hold on to our money for as long as possible, all right? Because the more of our money they have copying them, the more eToro gives them rewards. You know, there's that, but we can check that. We can easily just look at their statistics. Everything has to be backed up by their statistics. If they say copy them for one year, first thing I do is I look. I look at the previous years and I say, all right, well, he's done well, all right? So I look at these and this is a really good sign. If all of these were negative and he's saying, just copy me for one year, obviously it's gonna be different, right? So everything, bear in mind, everything I'm about to say is once I've checked that their, their yearly results from the past are actually good and I can see enough of them. If someone says copy me for a minimum of one year and I can only see six months of trading, it doesn't, it doesn't do me a lot of good. What I like to see, this is me personally, I like to see some history in the trader. Four times out of five here, if I had copied him for one year, it'd have been fine. And the last one was a very minor loss, you know? So anyhow, so let's say we've checked the statistics and realistically they have been making profit. Why are they saying minimum copy period one year? So when I first started copying these traders, one thing I definitely didn't have was patience. There was no patience because I didn't know how the markets moved. I didn't know that assets don't normally go from down to higher. They normally, they go like this. There's lots of fluctuations and volatility. Some days you're gonna be, it's gonna be really down, then it goes up, then it goes down, then it goes up. Overall it's going up, but it never goes there in a straight line. And it's taken me time and seeing that happening again and again with a range of assets to understand that that's normal. The risk is that I'm gonna copy someone and then I'm just gonna keep panicking and uncopying them whenever the market's going down, whenever it seems to be in red, whenever it's not going up in a straight line. And that can become very expensive because every time I copy a new trader, if I copy open trades, I pay all those spread fees. If I just uncopy them a week later and keep repeating that, copying a new person, then uncopying them when I see that it's going down at all, it's gonna cost me a lot in spread fees and I'm really not gonna be able to relax and get that idea of this is a passive investment. If we look at his chart, uh, Guillaume's chart, we can see it goes from low to high, but it hasn't gone there in a straight line. It's gone there with all of this fluctuation over here. It's a very, it's very normal, but it's something we don't know as new, new investors. Uh, all these are drawdowns. So if we look at his statistics here, we can see that his max yearly drawdown is 11.29%, right? That's the most it's gone down at some point in the year before going back up. Now we, at that 11.29, are we gonna panic and stop copying like halfway down or at minus 8%, lock in those losses, and then he turns it around and we're like, oh no, I missed it, I should have just kept copying him. I think that's what they're saying, is they're saying trust that we, we know that there are drawdowns. We know that the market moves in this spiky manner and we've got it covered, all right? So if I look here, these are the drawdowns. Let's say I started copying him in May here. And so May begins here, over here, and May ends here. 
Now, from here to here, it looks like there hasn't been much movement, right? But at some point during that month, it drew down all the way down to here, then it went back up again. So if we look at the May statistic, May, he's made 0.66% profit. But that doesn't show the real um, sort of picture for May. In May, yes, he went from there, he went up a tiny bit, 0.66. But there was this big drawdown in May. Now, if we panicked and closed it here, we'd have missed the actual turnaround of the making profit again. And it's very easy for us as new people to panic. So I think what they're trying to do is to just say, look, just relax, trust me for one year, I've got it covered. You're gonna see drawdowns, leave it for a year. If you see it going red, leave it for a year. Now, obviously we've got our copy stop loss. Over all of this, we can set our copy stop loss. We can say, if this person ever loses me 15% of the money I've invested, no matter what they think or how clever they think they are, I want you, eToro, to just stop that copy. There's a safety switch of the copy stop loss, which we always set with the maximum amount we want to risk. But within that, let's say we've set our copy stop loss at 15%. Within that, we let I have learned to just let them manage the risk in the portfolio. There's going to be drawdowns, there's going to be uptimes, but I leave it with them. Now, I've got used to that over time, that sort of level of trust, because I've seen the markets over years. I've seen how they move. New people don't have that. We, we just want to manage it all ourselves because our money's important. We're not normally spending frivolous amounts of money. We're normally investing money, which is quite precious to us, especially in the beginning. It's even more precious the, the less we have. So I think that's what they're doing with this thing here. They're saying, look, just trust me for a year. Now, obviously, when they say stuff like that, I don't just go blindly, yes, I check their statistics. I come here and with Guillaume, for instance, I can see the last five years and the picture looks good. I always check it with the statistics. I'm not just going to take their word for it. OK, again, I look at their, their max drawdown is minus 11.29. So I'll set my copy stop loss at maybe 15 percent. So I've given them that room to play with. If in doubt, ask questions on their feed as normal. I think that's the main reason minimum copy period one year. So another reason they might say minimum copy period one year has to do with this again, the same sort of question that came up with the recommended thousand dollars minimum copy amount, which is just, are we going to copy them for long enough that they can produce enough profit for us that we'll think they did a good job? So when we come in, we often want to make a lot of money and we don't realize how hard it is to do that. All right. We come in with five hundred dollars and we want to make another five hundred dollars by the end of the year. That's a hundred percent profit. It's very hard to make a hundred percent profit in a year without taking massive risks and potentially risking your hundred dollars that you've invested. So most people we're copying are trying to keep the risk low. And as a result, they're not going to be making us a hundred percent in a year. Maybe they make us 10 percent in a year. They're picking a time frame where they think they can make us enough money that we'll be happy with them and say, yeah, it was it was good work copying this person. We made the right decision there. So let's say we copied him for the first three months, minus 2.22%, then 105%, then 1.67. So we've copied for three months, which is actually quarter of the year. Would we be happy with that? I don't think he's even broken even for the first three months of the year. We're unlikely to be happy and we'll probably go away saying, oh, well, that was a waste of time. But let's say we stuck with him for the year. Look at this. Some months are huge. This one, April, 7.53%. June, 6.30%. Now, overall, if we copy him for a year, we're going to be in good, good profit. But if we copy for just a few months out of that year, maybe we're lucky and we hit three of the good months, bonus, but maybe we don't, you know. It fluctuates. The amounts they're going to be making in different months of the year fluctuates. But over the course of the year, they're pretty sure that they can return a good result to us. We'll be happy and we'll say, yeah, it was, it was awesome copying Guillaume. Good idea. Okay, so another reason, which is a bit less likely, but it's it's also a consideration when we come to traders. It's about their trading styles and what they trade. So some traders, let's say Guillaume, I don't know if this he does do this. Some traders trade around earnings reports. So once every quarter, all right, every um, three months, these big companies, which we invest in with equities, with stocks and shares, they release their earnings reports. They tell the world how well they've been doing in the last quarter. Have we made more sales? Have we expanded? Are our profits up or down? And during these times, there's intense volatility. The price moves up and down much faster and more than any other time of the year. So a lot of traders, they wait for these earnings reports, earnings season it's called, you may have heard of that. And around the day when the earnings reports, reports released, they trade much more frequently. And a lot of traders use these sorts of times, these periods of the year, to actually make a bulk of their profits. So let's say we're copying one of those traders. 
and we only copy them for two months where there aren't earnings reports. And so let's say the earnings reports came out here. If we don't copy them for the full year, we may not have exposure to their full strategy for that year. So a year may include different business cycles and earnings reports and different things which happen in the market, which uh, dividends releases, which, which make a difference to their overall strategy. It might be, it's a bit less of a, a reason, but that might also be a reason why someone's saying, look, copy me for the full year. So you get the full yearly exposure to my entire strategy and all of the various parts of that year's business cycle. Again, probably not as likely as those first two reasons, but it's a consideration that could be there. Some traders trade around earnings reports more than others. You know, that's it's more specific. You'd have to ask that particular trader about that one. OK, and finally, really, I asked Jay Nemesis about this. Thank you very much, Jay. I asked, why do you set this? Because if we go to, for instance, Jay over here in my portfolio, Jay actually says even more. So Jay actually says here, copy for two years plus for best benefits. Now, why is that? That seems like a really long time. What they're trying to do here, according to Jay, which is a really clever idea, is you may copy a trader at a time, no matter how good a trader is, no matter what they do, how skillful they are. Sometimes there are market events, we've seen them in the last kind of few years, which just tank the entire economy. The whole world suffers. Black Swan events, you can't see them coming, you can't foresee them, no one's prepared their portfolio for them, everyone gets hit. There are other situations where the trader may have just made mistakes or maybe an asset has just a company folded or an asset class has just tanked, gone through the floor. For a variety of reasons, a portfolio, a, a trader and their portfolio may have a very bad year or a very bad six months or a very bad time period. We might copy someone during a bad year. What they're saying is don't worry, wait. We reckon that within two years, I can turn that around and you'll be in profitability, even if there is one of these terrible unforeseen events. And I think what Jay said is they're always trying to sort of balance what a trader wants to hear. We, what we want to hear, we want to be excited. We want to, it's a risk investing money. We want to know we're going to make money. We're going to make returns. You know, that's why we invest really is to make money. He's trying to weigh that up, what we want to hear with what we need to hear, that the markets are volatile, that the markets are unpredictable and that there's risk in this and that you may need to wait. If everything goes wrong, it may be two years plus before I can adjust my strategy, arrange things, and we see profitability again. So if you're going to invest, be prepared that if things don't go according to the plan and what we all want instantly, profitable instantly, if things go bad, you might have to wait a couple of years, but then we can work it out. I think that's a really nice sort of sobering view um, that Jay sort of presented. I didn't even think of that, that that's what they're doing. They're saying, they're trying to put some reality into us, you know, and the worst case scenario before we start copying. And there we are. So that's another thing. Thank you very much, Jay, for your insight there, because I hadn't really thought about that one because I'm not a popular investor. They think of these things in terms of PIs. They have all these people copying them and they're guarding their money. Can you imagine how frightening that must be looking after people's money? And if there is a drawdown, watching people take those losses and stop copying and, you know, and all the rest of it. So I'd imagine there's this big sort of... Um, I don't know, the obligation on them or duty or sense of, you know, they really want to provide the best for the people who are copying them. I know I would, and I think that must be a big thing. So there we are back to Guillaume and the minimum copy period one year. I think some really good uh, reasons there why it might be minimum copy period one year, all based really around how we're new people. Most of us using eToro are brand new to investing. I know, you know, when I sort of joined eToro, I wanted to be in the markets. I wanted to have exposure to the stock markets, all these exciting things. Had no idea about any of this. Really worried about losing my money. Didn't have much money. I didn't know how the markets moved. Everything was panic. Everything was, you know, I didn't trust the markets. I didn't trust the people I was copying. No idea. So I think this sort of recommendation is really possibly designed for newer people, for people like me so that we can, you know, have time to, to copy someone and really see it work over a year. Obviously, I go to the stats and I will check. Always I will check. Are, is there a history of winning years? It's the first thing I check. Without that, you know, kind of forget about it. But that's the first thing I check. But once I can see that there is this history of winning years, then these are, there are some really good reasons why holding open for uh, one year might be a good idea. Um, and hopefully give me that trust moving forward that, you know, I can... I can relax a bit and earn like the passive income. The great, the goal 
of passive income. Okay, so I think I'll leave that one there. In the next one, what I'm going to go over is a bit about the feed. You know, do they have, are they live streaming? Do they have a, you know, a Twitch channel? Let's look at their websites. Are they keeping in touch? I'll go over some of the things I've, I've learned from my experience of looking at the feed and what we can tell about traders from there. Um, that's it for now. I hope it's been useful. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the video, please like the video. My dad told me, Tom, start reminding them. So if you've enjoyed it, please like the video and please subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And that's it. Uh, I hope you're all really doing well and see you. Bye-bye.